As the new presidential administration celebrates a victory, some people around the country and world are showing their disappointment with the results. That story is coming up. And a man accused of killing a Greater New Orleans police officer is now dead. That story straight ahead. Plus, a Eunice bank robber is behind bars after a bystander helped police catch the criminal. Live and local, you're watching Acadiana's KLAF News at 10. Good evening, I'm Danielle Grossman. Thank you for choosing Acadiana's KLAF News at 10 tonight. Jordan. Donald Trump is now officially the 45th president of the United States of America. Thousands in Acadiana have been watching the inauguration on TV. A few others got to see everything in person. Toy Thornton spoke to a few of those Acadiana natives. Take a look. Everything was grand. Everything was, uh, you know, to the top. Republican Executive Committee President Nathan Broussard is enjoying his time at the inauguration. We got great seats. Uh, we're in the green section, which, which wasn't too far. Uh, they had big monitors. Uh, the crowd was amazing. Um, we didn't see any of the, uh, any of the chaos that's on the news, but uh, everything else was great. He says seeing the inauguration in person was exhilarating, to say the least. It was really amazing. It's, you know, it's, a, I'm, I'm, it's something that I'm glad I got to experience. After experiencing all of the festivities, Bruce Hart feels like he's represented Acadiana well, and he has this message. I would like to tell everybody that, uh, like, like uh, President Trump said, uh, everything is going to change for the better. And, you know, it doesn't matter if you're Republican, it doesn't matter if you're Democrat, independent, it doesn't matter what sex you are, what color you are. You know, we're all Americans, we all believe the same, and it's going to be a great America. And we're going to make America great together. He also wants to assure everyone that our state has a great rep in Washington. When I say Louisiana over here, uh, they know what we stand for. All right, well, here's a look at some of the pictures that Monique Bro and her husband Tim Bro sent back to us from the balls this evening. Look how fun. Earlier this week, we interviewed Monique Bro, who owns Posh Exclusive Interiors here in Lafayette. Her husband Tim Bro worked for the Trump campaign as well. They told us after sitting in traffic for nearly an hour, they finally got to experience an inauguration ball. President Trump, Vice President Pence, and their wives attended the inaugural balls this evening. There are three official presidential inaugural balls. Two of them are open to the public and cost $50 per person. The third official ball, a salute to our armed services ball, is free, but is invitation only. At the Liberty Ball, President Trump made brief remarks before dancing with the First Lady to My Way. Vice President Pence and his wife joined in, followed by their family members. President Donald Trump has signed his first executive order of his presidency in the Oval Office this evening. Mr. Trump signed the orders just hours after he was sworn in as the nation's 45th president. The executive orders direct agencies to ease the regulatory burdens associated with the Affordable Care Act. Now, the U.S. Congress works on appealing and placing the law. The president was joined by Vice President Mike Pence and White House Chief of Staff. The president also signed commissions for his Homeland Security Secretary John Kelly and Defense Secretary James Mattis, who were both confirmed by the Senate. Well, it's been a dramatic split today in Washington. Cheers and celebrations in the mall and along the parade route, but just a few blocks away, chaos as police and riot gear have been clashing with a small group of violent protesters, smashing windows, setting fires. It's not even clear their anti-Trump protesters are just looking to cause trouble. There have been over 100 arrests. NBC's Jacob Ruscon reports. Burning cars and smashed windows. A small group of protesters dressed in black, their faces covered, armed with hammers and bricks. Facing off with thousands of officers on site, many in riot gear, confronting them with flashbang grenades and pepper spray. All of a sudden, the police officers started to spray pepper spray and they got our audio technician. They're coming. see us running because they're gonna throw more flashbangs. The chaotic scene just blocks outside the secure area of the inauguration and parade route. I personally have anti-establishment slants, but I don't think that this is anything that I want to be a This checkpoint is closed! Before the swearing-in ceremony even began, protesters tried to block checkpoint entrances. During President Trump's speech, several demonstrators were escorted out of the area. Several officers injured during the protest today and more than 100 people arrested. Once the inaugural parade began, the newly sworn in president facing thousands of peaceful protesters amongst his supporters. NBC's Stephanie Gosk was with him all day. When Donald Trump took the oath of office, the people here 
saying we shall overcome. Resist from day one. Similar demonstrations across the country. Arrest outside Trump Tower, New York City. A human chain across San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge. From Phoenix to Houston to Chicago, people protesting the country's new president on his first day in office. All right, I'm here with Dr. Chrissy Malloy, political expert here of ours. We're going to talk about the inauguration. Obviously, it was a long day. A lot of things went on protesting. We had um, all kinds of different people come to D.C. to experience, including people in, Lu in Louisiana, obviously, sure. Acadiana residents. So I think I want to talk about right now it was his speech. We were talking about that earlier, that it was a different kind of tone than in past presidencies um, and inauguration ceremonies. Let's talk about that for a minute. It was. Often presidents choose to make this a hopeful moment to really set a positive tone for uh, setting high expectations. And in one sense, Donald Trump did that, setting high expectations. But he also spent a lot of time talking about the deficits of previous administrations, how so many Americans are struggling economically in terms of crime, in terms of uh, mm -hmm. drugs and poverty and welfare. So there was a lot of emphasis on the things that have gone wrong and how he is going to help solve those issues. And he's not really talking about what he's going to do to make our country great again, which is, yeah. I think, maybe a lot of people were sounding off on social media and a lot of things about that as well. Yeah, it was not a very policy-specific speech. Um, the most policy-specific policy thing that he talked about was uh, infrastructure, the, the desire to rebuild roads and bridges and really work on these concrete things which of course costs money. Mm -hmm. um, so where that money is going to come from in a time when he wants to cut taxes is going to be a conversation to have with Congress. And another thing to talk about, the turnout for the inauguration in D.C. was substantially lower than in other years. I mean, is that surprising, do you think? It is, though this is also the lowest approval rating we've ever seen a president come into office with. So uh, even though there were, I think, a lot of support for him across the nation, during this transition period as he's been trying to appoint cabinet members some people have uh, pulled back on their support well changes officially come to the u.s and i guess we have to wait and see what happens so he's going to be at work tomorrow like he says so. yes he'll be at work uh, there are lots of executive orders that he wants to sign and to repeal that were put in place under president obama so there will be a lot of activity to watch even over the weekend awesome thank you so much dr Malloy. thank you so much for having me that's one of the hardest You know, tell one of my officers on why I said that he's no longer with us. Sylvester Holt, the suspect in a double shooting in Jefferson Parish, shot and killed himself this afternoon after an hours long standoff with the police on the Crescent City Connection this evening. Holt is accused of shooting and killing a West Wego officer and a pregnant woman this morning. The officer was responding to a domestic situation and was shot in the back of the head just before seven. The officer, Michael Louvier, leaves behind a wife and two children. The pregnant woman who was shot and killed is identified as Simone Veal. The relation between Holt and Veal is unknown. Back in Acadiana, the Eunice Police Department was quick to arrest a bank robbery suspect this evening. Officers accused 41-year-old Randy Corville of robbing the St. Landry Bank on 2nd Street. Police say he arrived on a bicycle and parked it in the near door on the outside, as you can see in this photo. Corville then can be seen on a surveillance video putting his sweatshirt hood on before entering the bank and jumping onto the counter as the teller runs for safety. Just before leaving the bank, someone took his bike and hit it. Police arrested Corville within an hour. Your help is needed identifying two suspects wanted for burglary. Brobridge police say these two suspects, one man, the other a woman, are wanted for a vehicle burglary at a local business. Anyone with information on the identity of the suspects or the incident is urged to contact the Brobridge police. The all clear is given at LJ Alleman Middle School in Lafayette. This morning, the campus was placed on lockdown after live ammunition was found in a restroom. Principal Jennifer Gardner tells Kelly F News the bullets found were for a rifle. The rounds were given to a student by another student. The school was on lockdown for more than an hour as police combed the campus. No weapon was found, but it did make for a tense moment. We have serious weather coming to South Louisiana tonight, and some in California are dealing with flooding. Well, the details coming up. And it has happened. A tornado warning now issued for Allen Parish right after the break. I'll let you know where this is headed and where we could get some more trouble. Full weather coming right back.